Hey everybody, as some of you might already know, our good friend Utah Ferris had passed away. We're all really heartbroken, I know I am. Uh, he was a really, really good friend of mine and I loved him very much. Um, he, had, uh, he had touched thousands of lives uh, through his, his wood carvings, his, um, his overall presence, uh, his good humor. Um, and uh, everybody who I've ever known has ever met Utah has just loved him dearly. And uh, he's going to be very much missed. Um, but what's helping me get through all this is the, the fact that um, I was lucky enough to become friends with him. And, um, and I hope he considered me a friend as well. Uh, by the way that we uh, interacted, I would, I, would, uh, I would venture to, you know, assume, I think it would be safe to assume that uh, he did consider me a good friend as well. Um, uh, years ago, I, uh, I purchased this flute from him. All right, it's my favorite flute. This is the one that I play in all my videos that uh, where I do some type of performance. This is what I do all my recordings with. Uh, it's in the key of B. All right, and there's his signature there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but um, this is my favorite flute. Out of all the flutes that I own, I mean, I've got a bunch that I've carved myself that I really enjoy and, and love as well, but this is my absolute favorite flute. Uh, the um, the uh, years go by, and I was uh, I felt compelled to start helping him out at some of the flute festivals and things, and and uh, and he was very grateful for that, and, you know, help him out uh, set ups and hang out and you know talk to some of the guests in, in here and there, and you know fetch him some something to eat or something like that. So uh, I was really uh, you know uh, happy to donate my time to Utah. And uh, with that, he gifted me with this flute here. It's in the key of G. You know, you can see the little the little um, key right there. And it's just a beautiful flute. It's nice and solid. And uh, I'm really grateful to have this flute in my collection. It's very, very beautiful. It sounds great. Uh, it even still has the tag on it, you know. He sent it to me. and, and I always hold great value in a lot of things, little things like that. Um, if he applied his hand to that, it it's uh, that's valuable to me because uh, it's got his handwriting on it and everything. So I, I never wanted to re remove that little tag. So this is this is one of my favorite flutes in my collection, uh, mostly because it, it's more of a gift. In that gift pack, he also sent me this gorgeous wood carving knife here. It's uh, Elkhorn with a nice little nice little high carbon blade there. I love this little knife. It's a beautiful gift. You can see it's got the sinew stitching going all around with the buffalo hide here. Just a really cool little knife, and I was really grateful to receive it. Um, years later, um, um, I actually uh, wanted wanted to um, uh, you know hang out with him and you know and things like that. So I, I started going over to his house more often, and uh, and I was a flute maker for a while myself, and and I had all these blanks that I never really wanted to. Uh, uh, try to tune out because I was afraid to ruin them and I really liked this piece of wood in particular so I so I said man I got this gorgeous piece of box elder it's all fire shot and everything and he said well I'll tune it for you and I said all right so I I brought it over to his house and and, he, and we hung out all day it was a great day I had a good time went out to Bach Tower and everything just just a, it was just a fantastic day but uh, we, we sat down inside of his shop and he broke out his tools and everything and, and uh, he added this little fetish on top of there. It's a little bear, you know, you can see that there. It's pretty cool. He hand carved that. It's a little cool. Little, look at the little smiley face he's got. <laughs> um, and then he started marking out the flute. The, these holes here are the key that he, uh, because I wanted to keep as much length on it as possible. That's how I usually built my flutes. Um, but, um, and he put these holes in here to key it out properly. and. And he started marking it. You could see those 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 markings there. He did with pencil, you know. And uh, like I said before, it's like anything that he applied his hand to, I, I had great, you know, great uh, sense of value towards it, you know. And, and I and I never wanted to finish it out. I never wanted to uh, sand it down and get rid of that. I just I just really liked it. And I said, you know, that to me is valuable. So this is a cool flute. <laughs> I was always really grateful for that one. Um, 
Now, now that he's passed on, uh, anybody who's ever purchased one of his flutes or um, his bird carvings, he was a champion uh, decoy carver. He would, he would carve like, um, you know, birds out of wood that were almost indistinguishable from the real thing. He was an amazing wood carver. Um, uh, some of you might not know that, but a lot of you already do. His birds were, you know, second to none. They were top notch. Some of the most beautiful work you'd ever see. And, uh, but anyway, um, what I am, what I'm getting at is like, uh, all those things are irreplaceable. So, and I'm not even talking monetary. I'm not talking about now that this flute's worth thousands of dollars. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the value of these, uh, of these items that we hold in here because, because he created them and they're irreplaceable. So any type of flute or, or wood carving or anything that you've ever received from Utah, hang on to that because that has a significant value and 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 and, uh, and it's irreplaceable so make sure that you guys hang on to it, that, that stuff and cherish it um utah like i said he touched so many lives and made so many people happy that uh i'm really grateful to have been a friend of his and uh, we're gonna really miss you very much utah rest in peace buddy thank you so much for the good times you to a really good friend of mine his name is Utah Ferris and him and I go way back probably a good 10 plus years that he's attended powwows and festivals like that and we've become good friends over the years and it's really nice to see him this year and uh, this is him Utah Ferris he's a flute maker I'll uh, put a link to his website in the description but uh, his work is absolutely amazing so, but uh, he's got a story that I've that stuck with me for many years and I want you guys to experience the story as well because it's hilarious Several, several years ago, I got on eBay looking at flutes for sale, and a man had a flute on there, and his story with the flute raised it from being a $50 or $75 flute up to a $500 flute, and it kind of goes back to some old circus stuff. He said that he was sitting by a campfire playing his flute, and he quit but he could still hear the flute playing off in the distance. So he got up, him and his son, and they drove about a mile down the road, and they could still hear the flute play. So he got back in his car and he drove a little ways further. After he got about five miles from his camp, he could no longer hear it. So he drove back to his camp and he could hear it playing again. The next day he got up and he posted it on eBay along with that story. And the last time I looked at it, that flute was selling for $450. I discontinued looking at it because I couldn't quit laughing. <laughs> what was it you told me? You said there was a sucker born every minute? Yeah, well, you know, that's back to the old sucker stuff, you know. 
I think it, it, it was w, was it W. C. Fields or one of the circus guys said, "There's a sucker born every minute." And that guy had ten of them on the line. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good story. I love that. Yeah, well, so, you know, it, and it's true. It is true. Yeah, and well, and you know what's really bad is. I keep wanting to do that because I've got some of those seventy-five dollar fruits I'd like to sell, but I can't tell that story. You know, I can't tell by I can't tell anybody how sacred the fruit is because it makes that noise. And the only reason I'm selling it is because it's got too much power for me to handle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now this is Utah. I'm at the Thundering Spirit Family Powwow on Mount Dora, and I just made a new Kia A flute, and I thought I'd play it for you to show you what it sounds like. Thank you. Jay, I really appreciate you helping me, man. No you worries. Got, you got me, you saved me about three hours of really hard work. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm you glad deserve you it, did. man, you deserve it. Yeah. Worked long and hard all these yeah. years, man. Yeah. So, and it was my pleasure to help you out. Well, that's good. I, I wish I wish more people felt like that. Yeah, you know? and I'm not asking anything in return, so, so it's fun. Yeah, I, am, I am indebted to you forever. If there's ever anything I can do for you, call me. All right, I shall. Okay. I'm calling him tonight. Hey, man. You <laughs> that favor? <laughs> you got All it. Right.